taking donations of baked goods. You can bring them to the church on Friday afternoon from 4 to 6 to the Christian Life Center or bring them Saturday, Saturday morning from 8 to 9. The Women's Fellowship Brown Bag Luncheon will be Monday, November the 6th at 11.30 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Grab your brown bag lunch and your drink from home or your favorite food soft spot and come and have a time of fellowship with your FUNC sisters. Calling all children, the F School will be in session on Saturday, December the 9th from 10 to 12. Make your plans now to join all the other Fs in training. This, is an F, this will be a uh, fundraiser for Embrace the Kids, Embrace the Alabama Kids. For the newsletter, FEMC will be distributing monthly newsletter, newsletters in a new fashion. Beginning in November, copies of the newsletter will be available for pickup in the North X and the elevated entrance near the bulletins. You can also view the newsletter by visiting the church website or in our weekly email newsletter. Those who acquire a newsletter by standard mail will continue to receive one. In November, the meetings are as follows. Trustee meeting, Monday, November the 13th. Finance committee, Tuesday, November the 14th. Leadership council, Wednesday, November the 15th. All meetings are at 5.30 in the Wesley classroom. The day, due to the Thanksgiving holiday, the, 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 week is, the, the meetings are a week ahead than they normally are. 
There being no other further announcement, I'll ask for Gaines and Corkville to come up at this time. Most of you know or have read or heard that October is Pastor Appreciation Month. I guess we ought to say every month is Pastor Appreciation Month. But uh, as a result of that, Pastor Ralph, uh, would, you, would you visit with me here, man? <laughs> we have nice. Yeah. That's pretty. <laughs> oh, oh, my. Exactly. Thank you so much for everything that you do and that Janet does. We appreciate it. We love you. And we're so glad that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. There's still enough Baptist trauma in me <laughs> that when they call the chairman of deacons up or the chair of the SPRC chair, there's a little bit of me that's like, oh, man. <laughs> Thank you so much, church. Uh, every month is Church Appreciation Month, too, and I, I really i uh, am grateful for you all. Grateful for your uh, work together in the gospel. I, I really appreciate that. Stand as you are able in body or in spirit this morning and let's continue with our with our call to worship. Now there, there's going to be a little instruction here. The asterisk means you're going to have to turn and talk to somebody. So if you're sitting beside somebody you don't talk to, now's a perfect chance to get over that. All right. As we gather to worship today, turn to a neighbor and say to each other, Welcome! I am glad you are here. Welcome! Now, turn to another neighbor and say, You are loved by God and by me. You are loved by God and by me. Y'all are doing good so far. <laughs> Beloved children of God, how can we love each other today? By meeting and listening and caring for one another face to face. Beloved children of God, how can we love God today? By practicing our love for one another in God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let us worship God together today. We come to worship God by living our love for God and neighbor face to face. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Take your hymnals and turn to page 154. I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. We'll sing the first, second, third, and sixth verses. <laughs>
join together in confessing our faith, you'll find the Apostles' Creed printed in your worship bulletin. We confess our faith together saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. arrangement she's made for us this morning. It's so pretty and so folly and I just think she needed to be recognized for doing that this morning. Everyone has received, uh, um, I'm sure either in the bulletin or by mail, your, your pledge uh, forms and your command, your finance committee has already begun preparations for the 2024 financial year. We realize the challenges um, because of the decrease in our membership. However, we embrace the new opportunities that this will afford to our church in the coming year. Uh, We've not turned a deaf ear to the situation at all. Um, hence your pledge card reflects some questions that were raised um, by the membership with, with respect to our tithes. As you prayerfully consider your financial discipleship for the coming year, please indicate your desires for our, our portion of funds. We realize that some of you can't com commit and complete a form uh, for a pledge but we just like for um, your prayers, your presence, your gift, and your services to be attentive to the church. Clearly our church continues with its community ministry through our food pantry, uh, our dedication to Embrace Alabama, and our new focus on our children's programs. As I shared with the Sunday School class this morning, R.A. Tori uh, has a book, uh, How to Pray. And especially applicable to our Sunday school lesson this morning and to our disciple discernment um, is the opportunities we have to take care of the needy. And we have plenty even in our own community. And when he spoke of prayer, he stated, what little streams of mercy and grace most of us know when we might know rivers overflowing their banks with proper prayer. Thank you. Let's receive our Lord's tithes and offerings this morning. <laughs>
Lord, thank you for the privilege and the joy that we have to give to return a portion of that which we have back to you. We, we've received it from your own hands. Blessed, O oh God, for your glory and for the good of your people, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> semester of school. We doing all right? PE and lunch is still your favorite, right? I'm with you. What's your favorite? Good. So what we're going to talk about in church today is Jesus is having a discussion with some folks and they're trying to trick him. They're trying to trick him with trick questions. And ask him, what's the greatest commandment? He says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And they're like, hmm, okay, that's right. He said, in the seconds like it, love your neighbor. Right? Love your neighbor like you love yourself. And they're like, hmm, huh. well, that's right. So then they went off to try to figure out some more tricky questions to ask Jesus. Those aren't really trick questions, are they? What's the most important thing to do? Love God. What's the next thing to it? Love your neighbor. Because you can't hate your neighbor and love God, and you can't hate God and love your neighbor. That's pretty hard to do with all that. So what we want to do today, everybody needs to know they're loved, right? And sometimes we have to tell ourselves, you are loved, even if it's just us loving ourselves. Sometimes we've got to take care of ourselves, don't we? That's why we go to PE and eat lunch, right? If you just go to PE and you don't eat lunch, it doesn't turn out well. Yeah, that's it. Makes the end of the day bad. Yeah, then you're starving, yeah. And if you eat all the time, you don't go to PE. Can't go to PE? 
Right? You can't go to PE because you can't get there. Right? I'm with you. Yeah. So God wants us to take care of ourselves. And that's one way we show God we love him. By taking care of ourselves and by taking care of others. That's part of what Mr. Stanley, Dr. Beard was talking about. That's part of what we do as a church. We help other people. All right. So here's what I want us to do. All right. So <clears throat> I want you to hug yourself. Say, you are loved. All right. Grown ups. Come on. You are loved. All right. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go grab somebody that looks like they need a hug because they need to know their love and tell them you are loved. Can you do that? All right. I'll give you 10 seconds. You ready? Go. 10 left. 9 left. 8 left. 7 left. 6 left. 5 left. 4 left. 3 left. Did he go hug you? These boys. Okay, come on. If we can just keep them men like that. Right? Amen? Amen. Let's thank God. God, I am grateful that these boys love their mamas. I'm grateful that they love you. And Lord, I'm grateful that you love all of us. Help us to show that love to others and to ourselves and fulfill your commandments. This we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, fellas. And after that, we're going to sing When Love is Found. Turn to page 643 and stand as you're able. You may not think you know this, but this is a very familiar to <laughs>
And I long for those days when we grow wiser and we love each other more and more and more and more and more until we get tired of loving each other. That really can't happen, y'all. That can't happen. As we live into Christ and live into His love, we will love each other. Let's pray. Lord, you know every heart here. You know the grave concerns that each one of us have. And you know those light and momentary distractions that we all have. We've been too hot, we've been too cold. It's too bright, I can't see well enough, and that's all just in the last 15 minutes, Lord. We thank you that your love is steadfast and that your reality in our lives is never waning. We are so grateful that you have reached down and claimed us for your own. We pray, O oh God, that we might be a faithful partner in the mission that you have given us. To go, to make disciples, to baptize them, to teach them, to do all that we do so that disciples will follow you, Jesus, and transform the world which you have created and for which you have redeemed with your life. We thank you, Lord, that you know every concern of our heart, especially those who are grieving this morning. Lord, you know the concerns we have for friends that are going to have heart surgery, for young ones that are recovering from RSV, for our aches and pains that don't seem to go away, and for the cancers that seem to pop up everywhere around us. God, you know all of those things. God, you know that our hearts are broken. That sometimes our minds are at best befuddled by what we see around us. But Lord, we know that the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that is given to us in you, Christ Jesus, from God the Father and, and made known beyond a shadow of a doubt by the Holy Spirit. We know that that is a healing grace for our broken hearts, our broken spirit, and our confused minds. We know this, God, because your saints have taught us that. They lived their lives before us. They walked with us. They did everything with us to show us what it meant to be a disciple. For that, we give you thanks for the communion of saints this morning. We give you thanks for their blessing in our lives. We pray together as they did, as you taught us, Jesus, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Please stand as you're able for the reading of the scripture this morning. Taken from Matthew 22, 34 through 46. Hearing that Jesus had silenced, silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on to these commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David? They replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you, Dr. <clears throat> Politics makes strange bedfellows. Y'all ever heard that say? That line probably morphed from uh, uh, a line in The Tempest. In, uh, by, written by William Shakespeare. For those of you who uh, have your phones and you want to look it up, it's uh, uh, Act 2, Scene 2, Lines 40 through 41. Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. That's the line from Shakespeare. Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. Trinculo is willing to lie down with a sleeping Caliban seek shelter from a coming storm because there is no other shelter. Caliban is an offspring of a witch and so he doesn't look quite like the other people. My daddy used to have a saying that he picked up from the Navy, any port in a storm. Um, I guess that may have come from this as well. That was back when they called the captain the old man. You know, the old man. He was 35, 38 but he was twice as old as most of the kids on the ship. Nothing makes enemies friends quicker than having a common enemy. Uh, now you can't take it too far because it puts you in a loop that leads to a contradiction. Some of you are fans of the show The Office. One of the characters, uh, Dwight Schrute, has a, a line that causes an infinite loop of contradictions. Jim is my enemy. But it turns out that Jim is also his own worst enemy. And the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So Jim is actually my friend. But, but because he's his own worst enemy, and the enemy of my friend is my enemy, so Jim is actually my enemy. But I feel like Paul wrote this somewhere. Sounds like a dog chasing its tail. You've heard that old joke, what does a dog do when it finally catches a car? We had a black lab mix named Roscoe that finally caught the car one day. He absolutely was clueless as to what to do with the car. I love how in our passage, the religious leaders band together and they agree to, to get up into Jesus' space, up in his face, face to face. Let's go question him. Let's go challenge him on the word the law, the prophets. I mean, they're after all going up against the word incarnate and they're going to challenge him on his, on his own self. Remember, that they want answers for Jesus that they can indict him with. This is, this is before he's been betrayed and, and, uh, and they're trying to kill him. They're trying to have some way of killing him or, or have some way of having him indicted and, and this is before they tricked Judas into betraying Jesus. 
And so face to face, the Pharisees asked Jesus a question and they ask him a question from their strength. That's always what you do. You don't ever ask a question trying to trick somebody about something you don't know anything about. They know the teachings. They know the law. They know the prophets. They know the teachings around the law. They surely they can trip up this un taught, unlearned, peripatetic rabbi from Nazareth with a question about the law. Surely if I ask them a question about the Bible, they won't know the answer. Still happens today. It's, it still happens today. We talked about that in Sunday school. Now the names have been changed. We don't call people Pharisees or Sadducees or well, there are some Pharisees out there, but we don't call them that. <laughs> the internet and the social media have replaced the, the temple area and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but the trip you up questions still come. And Jesus answers truthfully, safely. We'll, we'll talk more about that safe business in a minute. But Jesus answers them truthfully. The greatest commandment and the second commandment. The greatest commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And although the second commandment is like the first, it's not an either or, it's a both and. We live in a culture that likes either or because we want to stand on the side of the line. Either you're for me or you're against me. Used to be they said it was the fight or flight syndrome, right? You're challenged, you either want to fight or you want to run away. Well, there's a set, there's a third one. <laughs> it's called freeze. You ever been in that situation? I don't know to do, do, do this or to do that. I do, 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 do. We call it being paralyzed with fear. Sometimes the fear is of making the wrong decision, but sometimes there's not a wrong decision. It's just a better than the worst decision. Loving God ought not preclude or diminish our love for our neighbor. And likewise, loving our neighbor doesn't preclude or diminish our love for God. One ought to be an expression of the other. That's where the Pharisees and the Sadducees were struggling. They were so busy getting the words right, they missed the whole point. I love it when Jesus asked them a question face to face. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, it says in verse 41, Jesus asked them a question. Now, who, what do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they're like, oh, we got this. This is, no, this is easy. Son of David, no problem. We got this. Easy answer. Matthew only mentions the Pharisees at this point. Mark says the scribes were questioning Jesus. He also, Mark also mentions that there's a large crowd there while Jesus was teaching in the temple area. Like, like I said, Jesus answered them with a good solid answer on their question that was safe. He could have done a mic drop moment and just walked away. And oh, everything would have been fine. It was a nice, solid, safe answer. Only Jesus doesn't play it safe. Jesus isn't gambling. Now, mind you, he's not gambling because he knows what the cost of all of this is going to be. The cost of all of this is going to be his life. And by the way, the cost of all of this is also our lives. Take up your cross daily and follow him. What does it profit a man to save his, to, to, to gain the whole world and yet lose his life? We are to take up our cross daily and walk in this life. And sometimes you can't play it safe. Jesus didn't. He takes them right back to their expertise, the law and the prophets. Derek Weber puts it this way, except safe isn't what he wanted. He, Jesus, wanted them to hear. He wanted them to see. 
This commandment or these commandments, if you insist, are not simply laws to follow, like coming to a full stop at the sign and don't speed through the yellow light. Why in the world did Derek Weber pick those two things in a city where a rolling stop is kind of a stop? At least in my neighborhood, I see lots of rolling stops. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't take off when the light turns green. Because somebody is going to team on me if I do. No, he says, they, they are much more than that. They're not just guides to a better life. They're the essence of life itself. This isn't a pathway. It is the destination. Jay McKee visited me earlier this week, and I've got on my desk a, a little placard kind of thing that my sister gave me. It's not about the destination, it's about the ride. For somebody who rides Harleys, I don't know about the other motorcycles, but for somebody who rides a Harley, it's the ride. The ride is the destination. It's not where you're going, it's where you're sitting, straddling the engine with your hands on the twisted and your feet on the pegs. That is the destination you wanted. That's why you got out and started riding. Y'all, living in Christ is the destination. It, it isn't just, it, it isn't just uh, some good advice for getting along in the world. Although I got to tell you, if you follow Jesus' teachings, it's great advice for how to get along in the world. If all of the world lived like Jesus taught us, it, I feel it would be a great place to live in. There wouldn't be any wars or rumors of wars if everybody did it. Wouldn't be any selfishness. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be any stealing or thieving or lying or cheating. I hear sex more in my head. What a beautiful world. It isn't just about getting along in this world. It's about seeing God face to face. This is who we are supposed to be. Not just what we're supposed to do. This is who we are supposed to be. Church, hear me. This is who we are supposed to be. We are supposed to be loving people. We are supposed to be forgiving people. We are supposed to be people who create disciples not out of fear or manipulation, but out of love. This is who we're supposed to be. Remember last week I took you back, um, I think, to the beginning of the Ten Commandments. Uh, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. The Ten Commandments begin with an act of grace. You and I have been given grace. We are to give grace. We are the ones who love God with all that is within us. And we are the ones who see our neighbors as an opportunity to love God more by loving them in the wholeness and hope, Derek Weber says. We talk about this in Sunday school. It's at this point, both Mark and Matthew mentioned that they decided, that is the religious leaders, decided they better not ask him any more questions. That whole thing about David and my Lord and Lord, Lord, that, they're like, oh, I don't even know what to do with that. Lunchtime, let's go. And they ran off. They lived to fight another day. This tag team of strange bedfellows decided that discretion was the better part of valor, although one could question whether valor ever entered into their deliberations. The Old Testament reading that we didn't read today, but the Old Testament reading from the lectionary for today is the passage in Deuteronomy 34 where God takes Moses up on Mount Pisgah. And there on the mount, he shows Moses the promised land. And he says, now Moses, you can't go. But I wanted you to see it. I wanted you to know what your children were going to be moving into. I, I wanted you to know 
what this stiff-necked and hard-headed bunch you've been leading, I wanted you to see what they were going to inherit. Of course, when they got to the promised land, they were stiff-necked and hard-headed. And so the same troubles they had with Moses, they had without Moses. They suffered the same sort of issues with Joshua. And then we went to the judges. Oh, and it got so much better. Don't you remember? It was all better in the book of Judges. No, nah, stiff-necked and hard-headed is a thing. If only people will live according to God's direction. When Jesus answers this question, he's taking us all up, Derek Weber says. He's taking us all up to the mountain and showing us the vista of the kingdom of God. What should life be like? It ought to be the promised land where you love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength and where you love your neighbor as yourself. Can you see it? He asked. Can you see the promised land where we will all live this commandment, this description of who and what we are and will be together? Can you see it better yet? Can you see yourself there? Can you see yourselves living that way, driven by love and not by the divisions that we've created for ourselves? Folks, I'm here to tell you, some of us are just... Uh, I remember that song by Hank Williams, Jr. It's just a family tradition. Hank, why do you smoke? Right. Folks, there's a lot of family traditions we've inherited that center around hate, meanness, stinginess, self-righteousness. <coughs> Some traditions don't need to be kept. Some cycles of abuse and trauma need to be broken. My mama smoked Lucky Strikes. I don't smoke Lucky Strikes. And according to the paperwork I'm going to fill out for teacher's retirement, I have not smoked tobacco in the last 12 months. But my mama also loved chocolate-covered chips. You know, a good chocolate-covered chip. That's the good stuff. She also... Drank Coca Cola's out of that little glass bottle. I'm diabetic, so I don't drink those anymore. I drink the Coke Zeros. Some traditions you keep, some traditions it's better to let go of because you have a greater commandment than the trauma and the tribulations and the traditions that you grew up with. You have been given a greater commandment. There would come a time when Jesus would say, a new commandment I give you. Love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples. We need to see ourselves living that way shaped by loving care for those who need us, worshiping as though it was the most important thing we could ever be doing any time of the day or night because it is. It's an outpouring of a love that defines us, lifts us, and heals us. We have all kinds of questions. You know, people have this list of questions. I'm going to ask Jesus when I get to heaven why there are fire ants, right? Why are there so many mosquitoes? My nephew's got a whole uh, food chain life cycle thing that shows you that mosquitoes are absolutely necessary. I am unconvinced. You know, I got a feeling when we get there, 
when we see Jesus face to face, some of those questions. What was that I was going to ask? I cannot remember. It'll come to me. Or not. Who's going to lead you over the mountain to the promised land? Now Moses, we're told, was died and was buried. We know not where. Promised land wasn't his to inherit. But face to face with God, he learned that those that he had led and taught and loved would. I don't know about you. I used to be in fear of uh, facing the one who loves me face to face. I used to be in fear that God was going to do something terrible to me. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus face to face. I've got a strange feeling he's going to resemble all of you together. I don't know how that's going to work out, but I just got a feeling. Just got a feeling. How about you? Are you looking forward to seeing Jesus face to face? You can every time you clothe someone, every time you feed someone, every time you visit someone who's sick, every time you pray for those and visit those who are in prison, every time you give a cup of cold water to somebody who's thirsty, not only in their body, but in their soul. You can see Jesus face to face. That's what Mother Teresa said. She saw in every one of those people in Calcutta. She saw in Christ. Let's pray. Lord, the biggest question we can answer in our lives today is, am I living a life of love that you have called me to? I know that I have my life because you love me. Lord, help me to see in every face I look at, your face, and to love all that I see with your love because I am loved. Lord, this we ask in your precious name. Amen. Turn in your hymnals to page 512. We will sing the first, third, and last verse of Stand By Me. Stand as you're able. Jesus loves you. I hope you know that. I love you. I hope you know that. I'm working on trying to make sure I show it to everybody. Go and serve the one who loves you to the uttermost.
in peace, love, and joy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.